Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Josh, and today we're going to talk about how to identify vintage starter. Let's get into it. In 1971, David Berkerman began Starter as a athletic apparel brand that would manufacture uh, jackets and other such items for small colleges, high schools, companies, etc. And eventually they grew into actually having licensed products for some of the major professional sports leagues like the MLB in 1976 and by 1983 had included the NHL, NBA, and NFL. Over the next decade, the starter brand would grow in popularity, even reaching such a fever pitch as to motivate people to rob others for their starter jackets. And this popularity continued all the way through the 90s and waned in the late 90s and eventually resulting in the uh, bankruptcy of the company and they lost all of their licensing agreements at that point and then were later sold to Nike in 2004. Nike then sold them in 2007 and to a company called Iconics, which sort of revived the brand, uh, inked a deal with Walmart to produce a bunch of cheaper products, and, and then in 2012 began what is called the Starter Black Label, which sort of is the higher end tier brand, sort of reminiscent of what they had in the 90s and the 80s. They would regain their licenses for the NCAA around this time in 2015, and then again for all the other major sports uh, leagues in 2018. Currently, Starter manufactures uh, gear for all the major sports leagues, um, mostly repros and sort of throwback retro styles from the 80s and the 90s. Now, speaking of styles, Starter had a couple products that became sort of their iconic products throughout their career and one of them was most definitely the starter jacket which was a satin jacket with uh, knit cuffs and trims and this was the piece that starter was built on the MLB managers wore them on the field as well as other people participating in the game the starter jacket bled into the NBA where they were worn by uh, players and coaches and then the starter jacket became such an iconic piece in the hip-hop community being worn by NWA, Puff Daddy, all these guys wearing the starter jacket. It became its number one iconic piece. Additionally, Starter had another product that was very iconic, and that was the Starter Cap. Sort of kicking off really hot in the early 90s, Starter was the first brand to put their logo on the back of the hat, realizing that people were going to wear them backwards, sideways, and all kinds of different other ways. They even had a commercial with DJ Jazzy Jeff of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air fame to sort of model that. Yo, this is Jazzy Jeff. And how did I get my starter hat to look like this? The Jazzy Jeff breakdown. First you grab the hat. Then you grip the hat. Then you flip the hat. Make sure it's a starter hat. Then you raise the hat. Then you slam the hat. Then you twist the hat. Then you turn the hat. Then you spin the hat. Then you smooth the hat. But hey, don't forget, look for the star. Now, Starter would produce a lot of other products, such as jerseys like this one right here, Go Tim Tebow. And they would produce uh, other overcoats and different uh, t-shirts and lots of other designs, but none nearly as popular as the jacket and the hat. Now, how do we know whether a Starter piece is vintage or not? Well, the company's history kind of helps us out here. When they filed for bankruptcy, they lost a lot of their license agreements. And that means that basically anything that has a licensed trademark on it, like the NBA, NFL, MLB, NHL, etc., all that stuff was produced prior to 99-2000 era. Now, there is one caveat to this, and that's because in 2015, Starter regained the license for the NCAA, and then in 2018, they regained the license for other major sports leagues. That means the vast majority of Starter's professional league, NCAA league stuff, that has been produced was produced prior to their bankruptcy. Now, unlike a lot of other brands, there's not a lot we can glean from the actual construction of a particular piece. 
we have to sort of look at the branding. The branding is what really gives us an idea of how old something is or is not. Here are a couple of the tags from the 70s. You can see they're very simple, they're very basic, there's not quite yet the branding uh, essence that they sort of distilled down into the 90s. It's very simple. The earliest of these tags being the be a starter tag appears to be the oldest that we can really get our hands on. Now the tags in the 80s really began to reveal the final sort of form of the starter brand. You can see that the font changed even though it still simply says starter here on this uh, mid 80s piece. In the late 80s, you can start seeing that they introduce the S and Star logo, and that S and Star logo really took shape into the 90s. Here are a bunch of 90s tags, a bunch of different variations of this tag. They don't seem to really correspond super well to a particular time, except maybe you know late 90s or early 90s. Uh, but for the most part, what you need to know is that these are vintage. Now, each one of the professional leagues had sort of a sub line underneath the bigger header of the starter brand that represented their more premium products like the MLB had the Diamond Collection, the NHL had Center Ice, NBA had NBA Authentics, and the NFL had the Pro Line. These all were generally speaking a little bit more premium, maybe something that was actually worn uh, by players or managers on the field, uh, but they all represent a little bit of a higher quality product. You can still find uh, items from any of those professional leagues with just the simple starter branding. Now traditionally in dating vintage clothing, whether or not an item was made in the USA or internationally uh, determines whether or not it's vintage or not. In this case, there was a lot of product uh, that was made by Starter internationally, especially right after NAFTA. The 80s and the 70s obviously were mostly made in the USA. So if you find a Starter jacket, let's say, made in the USA, it's most likely from the 80s. It appears that Starter made their t-shirts uh, in the USA up until the late 90s, like most t-shirt manufacturers, but was pretty early to move production of their starter uh, windbreakers, jackets, um, and, and some other things out of the country fairly early, uh, manufacturing a lot in Hong Kong and Korea. Now again, because of the nature of starters history, it is somewhat easy to point out a vintage starter piece. But you also have to be aware that there is a bunch of starter that was manufactured for Walmart. All of these things tend to have much cheaper construction. They may have the, uh, instead of having a tag, they may have it printed on the back of the garment. That's an easy sign that tells you this is not a vintage starter piece. Vintage starter pieces will almost always have a tag. Uh, they may have it sewn in, but they definitely have a tag. It also helps that the Walmart stuff wasn't very cool. It was not particularly trendy or interesting. So if it looks cool, it's probably vintage most of the time. There's no doubt the starter brand was incredibly important to fandom in the 80s and the 90s. It connected teams with their fans and fans have the ability to represent the, their favorite team in ways that they could only have dreamed of before having super cool gear that even the professionals wore. So the starter brand was incredibly impactful. All right, so hopefully some of that information was helpful to you and help you sort out whether or not your starter item is vintage or not. So you can maybe recognize it better in the thrift or in you know, your dad's closet. Uh, but no doubt starter is super dope. I think it's still super relevant. Um, and hopefully you can go find yourself some dope vintage starter. Well, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe. If you like vintage information like this, we cover lots of brands. So hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be notified when we post, and we will see you guys in the next one. Peace.